Good morning. Good morning. It is Saturday. We've made it through the week. We made it through the week. Um, hi, I am Sunshine. Uh, welcome to Cubies and Newbies. This is the ABQ method for solving Rubik's Cubes. I'm the ABQ tutor. And this is... <laughs> yes, I created it. Formula A is four moves. Formula B is eight moves. And four mo the four moves... Uh, you hold the cube, whatever size cube you have, whatever size cube you have. You hold the cube and look at the front as if it were rows, if it were a spreadsheet with rows and columns. And the one arrow that you see represents the one slice that you move, and the the black line, the line represents the rest of the cube. So regardless of which cube you're working on, you're moving one row. For the, for A, you're moving one row and one column, usually the bottom row and the right column. But it can, you can also you affect the first face, uh, like the absolute center, by applying it to the middle row and the middle column, like so. Uh, you can do it, use it for the entire first face, but A, uh, A for centers does affect all six sides at the same time. So you have it's not useful uh, except for the first face. Formula A is four moves, formula B is eight moves, it moves three pieces around, and it's one row, two col top row, two columns, and it's always the top row, and then two columns, and whichever two columns you use dictate which col which pieces you're moving around. If it's, if it's the two outside columns, you're moving corner pieces around, just the top, these three top corner pieces. If it's the, top, if it's the uh, a middle row and an outside row, you're moving edges around, because those are the ones that intersect on the top. If you're moving two inner columns, you're moving centers around. And with that, you can solve every complexity Rubik's Cube, every complexity mix. Uh, do, 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 do. So, uh, someone asked me, let's see, how many people do we have here yet? Should I answer my questions yet? <laughs> Good morning, guys. So, um, yes, let's see, yesterday, we, let's see, we, we did the quarters. There's no order of operations for this, for the cubes. Uh, and it works on every complexity cube, every complexity n by n by n cube, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, just because it's in a cube shape doesn't mean it translates as a cube. But if it, if it, if it, just, if it has just rows and columns, um, then this works. It works on uh, my 3 by 3 by 9 as well, even though the 3 by 3 side is banded. Uh, you can it this it it solves the three by three by nine as well. Um, I was asked a question that I don't know the answer to. Uh, someone asked me uh, if it was if it if it would work on the ghost cube, and and I I this or a cube that doesn't have colors. Uh, colors is not the issue. It works on the the ghost the uh, mirror cubes. Uh, here's a three by three. Here's a five by five. It works on the mirror cubes just fine. Anything that anything that has rows and columns that you're working on, uh, this works on. Uh, da, 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 the the minxes uh, don't have rows and columns, but you can translate the rows and columns into your head by by morphing by <laughs> blending the star parts together in your mind. So, bottom row, right column, this works the same as bottom row right column okay so you could so formula a works formula b works uh top row outside columns moves these three corners so even though this is not a spread this, you can't view this as a spreadsheet you can formula a and b still works on it but i was asked about the ghost cube and i looked did not do not know the ghost cube so i looked up the ghost cube and it looks very scary <laughs> So, and I was not able to tell from looking at it whether it follows the pattern, the internal pattern of a cube or a minx. So I do not know if it would work on the ghost cube or not. I have not tried the ghost cube because I don't have one unless you want to send me one. Uh, so, but as far as shapes, this, this uh, looks daunting, bunch of diamond shapes. However, this is just a three by three. Uh, it's just, it's three by three with the corners cut off so the in, internally this is still the three by three uh, these are the center pieces right here these are the edge pieces right here and these little things are the corner pieces so that's how it moves 
left, right, top, base, front. So this is just a three by three. So this works with the with ABQ method. Uh, the only difference with this uh, as far is that uh, because, so you can, you can treat, the, I, even though the center has four pieces, it doesn't move four ways. So you can just treat that, you can see that that's a center. You can see that that's a corner. But the edge pieces are one color instead of two. So if you get to the last to the last part, solving the last fight face, and it doesn't look right, you have a, a parity, well not really a parity, but say, anyway, um, what it's caused by is one of these uh, edge pieces is flipped, and you can't tell it because it looks the, it looks the same. So go ahead and flip one of those, and the, that is, that will work. So this it works on this. Like I said, it works on the mirror cubes. This is a plus cube, and if you imagine this to, this to be a five by five with pieces missing, it works on this as well. So so um, you don't have to worry about getting confused between this red, white, and green, and this red, white, and green because it, it only lands in one spot. The cube knows what it's doing. So I do the white face, the white and yellow face first. Again, this is why yellow is a perfect color to start with, is because. <laughs> white and yellow. So I do the I do the, the the white and yellow first to get it into the plus shape, and then I just work around. I start usually with the green, and I start it, and then I start working around. And you can get a parity on this as well. It's caused for the same reason. Just do the slice of the center slice is a quarter turn off. In which case you can use that as a center slice to fix it. Um, Actually, I use the yellow because I like to. I like to have my sides paired up to the icon in the middle. So, so yes, the ABQ method works on sh some non some shapeshifters. Hi, hey Jube, how you doing? So the ABQ works. AB method works on. It, it doesn't have to be uh, a cube shape, but it has to be, have the internal workings of the cube. It has to have rows and columns. And uh, so I do not know looking at the ghost cube whether it has rows and columns or not, or whether it's, I, but so I, <laughs> this is a long way of saying, I don't know. <laughs> have not tried the ghost cube yet, so I don't know if it works. The go, uh, does the ghost cube, is it, is it really, is it just a, a three by three that looks strange? Because if, if the internal workings, it's a three by three mod, then yes. If it has rows and columns, regardless of what they look like, then this will work. So thank you. <laughs> Jube, for letting me know, for answering that question that I did not know the answer to. But uh, it does, so it does not have to look like a cube, but it has to have the internal workings of a cube. And then it works. So yay, thank you for, for that. Uh, I do have, see my pretty mirror cube? It's a five by five. Uh, this is not commercially available. This was, was modded. Someone 3D printed the extensions and put it and glued it onto a 5x5, five five. so that's how I got this one. And I'm very happy with it, but it's, <laughs> it's one of those cubes that just takes a long time to do. <laughs> uh, what's your new per you wow, on the 3x3 three three or something else? Someone just got a new personal best. New personal best, 14.67 seconds. <laughs> you guys intimidate me so much. <laughs> Anything that moves faster than my eyes can follow is just magic. It's just magic. Uh, so, uh, today, what do we want to talk about today? Do we want to play? All right, so you're 14 seconds, and I am, I have beat a minute once on the 3x3 three three <clears throat> that I know of. Uh, now, well, let's see, what, we, what do we want to talk about? I've got, I, it's been a while since I've done my 3x3x9. Three by three by and the ABQ method does work on the 3x3x9 three by three by with one minor modification. Average tw 22, that, that, that beats the very first world record set, <laughs> I, which I believe was 23.42 seconds, if I'm remembering right. But <laughs> I watched it on, on TV. <laughs> I had my cube in my hand. 
I looked at my, I was down to about three minutes at the time. I was really good. I was really good. I could do it in three minutes. And uh, so I looked at the cube in my hand. I looked at that 23.42 seconds. <laughs> I'm like, nope, <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Put my cube down. I didn't touch it for a month because I was so intimidated by it now. <laughs> and then I'm like, you know what? It, I don't have to be fast. I can just be fun. <laughs> so, and if you go to my website, you'll see that how I you'll you'll see that how uh, knowing how to do the cube was my salvation in middle school because is that a three an RS three M? I think you're talking about a brand name. This has it does have an M on the middle, but it's been wearing off. And I do not know which what it is, but it d did have a did have a golden M in the middle, and it's very smooth, very, very finger tricky. So it might be if if that has the the, the golden M in the middle. Uh, this is the three by three by nine, and I've set it up with a parody, so I can t talk about parodies. Uh, I can, I can read, I can set these though. My phone is making noises. Somebody loves me. <laughs> okay. So, what is y'all's favorite, favorite, uh, twisty toy? What's your favorite cube to play with? I like, I love, my main is the 7x. I like the 7 by because, uh, the 3x3 three three solves too quickly and it doesn't, it, what, cubes for me are a very useful tool is for, for getting into a meditative state, just kind of zoning out. 3x3 three three are gigaminks? Oh, 3x3 three three gigaminks. Wait. 3x3 three three or gigaminks. Okay. Um, the giga is the 5x. This is the mega. I'm confused. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a stupid American. What do I know? Okay. So, I but I love, if I want to, so if I just want a cube, I just want to get out of my head and just because it's meditative, it's, it's repetitive, it's simple, and it always does the thing. So, um, the cubes are I use to kind of just get out of my head and just and zone out because it works. So it works. Um, but the three by three solve doesn't solve it take, take long enough for me to get into that headspace. So I, I the seven by seven is my favorite cube to play with. If I just want to play with a cube, it's my seven by seven. I have larger ones. But uh, they, they kind, I kind of get bored while I'm midway through a solve. So I like my 7 by, um, and if I'm, so, but, if, but if I want to be, so if I want to just meditate, just clear my head, I'll do a cube. If I want to focus on something else rather than what's in my head, then I take the minks. The minks. Uh, and my favorite minks to play with is the 5x5. Five five. I do have a 7 by. But uh, it gets, I get bored halfway through. <laughs> so I have to do it in two stages. Uh, I, do love, I do love the mirror cubes. I love the mirror cubes. My favorite mirror cube is my GAN. This is not my GAN. It's in my, per, it's in my backpack over there. But, I, but the, what, I like about the, what I like about my GAN is the mirrors. That's the GigaMeets. The 7x is the GigaMeets? Yes. What is the 7x called? The seven by called Zeta. Okay, Zeta minks. I don't have a whole family of minks. I don't. I have a. I have the two by two. Where 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 is it? I have the two by two. The three bunch of three by threes. I have the five and the seven. I don't have fours or sixes, so I don't know how. Uh, how I haven't imagined in my head how that. How much was this? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. But. Uh, I had some money and I bought it. And I did just buy it uh, online. I think I bought it at the, at the cubicle. So you can look at that and find out. I don't know how much the, my void cube is either. I bought that so long ago. Uh, so again, it's not about shape. It's about what the internal workings look like. And I do. So if I want to, if I want, because the difference between this in my head is that there, it hops like a knight on the chessboard rather than just the zoom, the queen, 
going where it wants to be. Because up for here, I just pick a piece and throw it in the direction it wants to be and move on to the next piece. Here, I find a piece, I, I go layer by layer because it's just so, you know, there's just so much to it. So here I have to find, okay, if this piece, in order to get here, I have to go there and then there. I have, if I have to figure out how to hop it. In, oh, teraminx. So what is etaminx then? So the teraminx, so, so it's mega, mega, gig, meta gigatera. Okay, meta, meta gigatera. All right. So for the minxes, you have to kind of plan how you're going to get there. It's like, I don't think I, I did not spend $400 on a cube. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But I might have. I might, I had, <laughs> I might have. <laughs> Probably why I'm not buying any cubes anymore. I've got to save up my money. So... So my favorite cube, my, my my main cube is my seven by my main minx is my Giga minx, and this, like I said, I haven't talked about this for a while. So unless you have questions for me, I'm going to talk about this. Um, it I have it set up for a parody, but I've got other things set up for a parody. So I'm going to go ahead and scramble. I'm going to scramble my three by nine guys. Okay. Because no one's asked me about parodies, so I... <laughs> okay. So the only real way to scramble this, because it's... Try a, try a pyraminx? Okay. Oh, a pyraminx. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, the... That's the 7 by. That's the 5 by, right? That one? The 5 by? A triangle... Oh. Oh, the pyramid! The pyramid, the triangle cube. Uh, I have done the pyramid in a previous life. Back in the 80s, I did the pyramid. I did I did the pyramid, I did the snake, I did all kinds of things back then. But uh, since creating the AB cube method, I have not had a pyramid pyramids in my hand. So I'm, I'm, sh I'm not sure how to convert the AB cube method to the pyramids. Uh, I don't have one. <laughs> and since I spent $400 on the... <laughs> Pyramid. <laughs> um, so, if I get a if I get a pyramid, I will try the pyramid on that. I'm happy to do so. I've had a couple of requests for that, so I will do that. Um, so not that. And that's not what you were requesting. The only way to really scramble this because it's a three because the three by three side is is not the same layers as a nine by, is I have to first solve it by shape so that I can rotate the center pieces. Um, so I'm going to solve this by shape so that I can further mess up the, the nine side. The Terraminx isn't the $400. The Zetaminx. Oh. And what is the Zetaminx? How many layers is that? Oh. That's why I haven't bought it. <laughs> That's why it's sitting in my shopping cart at the cubicle. <laughs> I want to get a whole family of the minxes, you know, one of each size, however big, two, two as big as they make it. <laughs> um, I'll, from the seven by, from the seven smaller, I have been able to, you know, <laughs> take it apart and put it back together again. I think, yeah, I figure, yeah, I've, I've not, haven't fully mastered the cube until I've taken it apart and put it back together again. So I understand how the internal workings work. And I, I tried to take my six by six apart and put it back together again, and I couldn't do it. <laughs> I ended up, uh, uh, one piece, I didn't try, I did not try to take it apart. It popped. And I tried to take it apart. And so one piece that bought yay big uh, came out, and I couldn't get it back in together again. So then from that point on, it, it kept popping because I couldn't put it back in together again. So um, I set it aside until I could find someone who knew how to fix it. And then I moved and didn't take it with me. Zeta is 13 Quetamix. Is night? Oh, they have 19 now? Wow, it's been a while since I've looked. <laughs> okay. Cubes are fun! Aren't they just fun? Not for sale. So someone someone just someone just did it, so it's not commercially available, someone just created it. <laughs> I saw this video of someone had done someone had handmade 
a really big cube, and they they were like doing a video demonstrating how it turns. And they were turning it, and they went. <laughs> the look on this poor guy's face, <laughs> like, well, that's why it's not commercially available yet. <laughs> okay, so in order to in order to really to scramble the three by side, the the nine side, the three by three has to be solved by shape, not color. So the first thing to solve it by shape uh, is I have to make sure that the horizontal air layer. The middle layer is horizontal, so if I, do, if I solve it in like this, it won't turn. So I've got to start by making them all horizontal, okay? And then, uh, just formula A just gets me just throw pieces in place in into the position that are not supposed to be there. That's fun. So I solve so I solve it in the scrambled position. But three by three by nine shape. And like I said, I, I have to make sure that the center is horizontal. And then, um, so there's my corners, flip it over, do the, my other corners. I'm doing a challenge for YouTube at the moment by getting 15. A 15 average in one week. That sounds fun. That sounds fun. Let me send me a link and let me know how you're doing. Okay, so there, um, and then I got to move this one. Okay, so having solved it non-correctly, now because if I if I just uh, twisted the the twisted the nine by side before I started. Then after I do the three by three part of, of having done the cube, uh, the nine would be already laid, laid up, but I would just slice it, and that's not a challenge. So I have to I scramble it. The only way to scramble the nine side is to do it the wrong direction, and then scramble again. So now I've got my three by nine. It's eight hours of a three by three. Oh wait a minute. So so you're going you're sub average right now. You told told me that. Uh, you're, oh wow! So your personal best is under 15, and you're going to try your your average is 22. You're going to try to bring your average from 22 down to 15. You, your fingers fly, your fingers fly. Um, that's going to be yeah. Okay, so did you just pick 15 as an arbitrary challenge, or is there? A challenge going around YouTube like hey who can do an average of 15 <laughs> I I don't even know how fast uh, mr. Var Jeffrey Varasano is right now uh, Jeffrey Varasano was the guy that first set the record he's the first record center uh, this back in 1981 uh, Jeffrey Varasano I watched him and his brain is just beautiful. I wish I had. <laughs> um, you just wanted to set it for a personal, personal goal. That's good. So, Mr. Barasano, um, someone told me once, when someone told me, someone reviewed my ABQ method and said, your method reminds me of the Varasano method back in, from the 80s. So I went and looked up what the Varasano method was and realized it was, that was <laughs> Jeffrey Varasano, the one who, <laughs> the one who started us on speed cubing. Um, and so I, became, I fangirled out, and I became, I went like I messaged him, on I Facebook messaged him, and uh, he responded, and so we uh, we're Facebook friends. But he was telling me he was talking to me. Uh, I found his he he has a YouTube video YouTube tutorial on how to solve the cube, and his brain is just so much more advanced than mine because he looked he's he's like okay. Let's pretend, let's say you want to move this piece, okay? So do whatever it takes to get it to the top, and then rotate the top, and then just reverse what you did. And I'm like, I, I can't just reverse what I did unless I wrote it down. <laughs> I can't. If I go into a building, I forget which direction is north, south, east, or west. I, just, I can't just reverse what I did. But he owns a, very, he owns a pizzeria in Georgia, um, and he still plays with the cube. Kids, kids come in. For pizza or just to bring them their cubes and he will look at their cube and make his three by three match it uh, and so he's he's still very fast and he's, he's, he's 
I, want, I have to go meet him one day. I just have to. But he showed me, uh, he, sh he, he, sh he gave me a link to his uh, folder that has um, pictures and stuff from his cute, from the 80s, from the cubing days and stuff. So I got to see, I got to see, like he wrote this book um, once, once he was the record holder. He wrote the book and got it published. And then when the 4x4, I just got, I'm, I'm a fangirl. I got to talk about Jeffrey Garzano. And then when the 4x4 came out, because he was the record holder, uh, they invited him to the conference, to the to the toy con, toy con convention, um, where they were advertising it, and so they said, "Here's a four by four you can play with." And so he played with it for a while, and he played with it until he figured out, "Oh wait, that doesn't happen on a three by three. That's illegal." And so before he could figure out how to solve the parody, they said, "Okay, time to go home. Give it back." <laughs> and something similar happened. To me, in that I had a four by four, I finally got my daddy to buy me a four by four. I had a four by four, and it broke. One of the internal pieces broke. I had gotten as far as two layers done, and it broke. And <laughs> so I had this unfinished puzzle in my head for months until I could find a place <laughs> to buy another one. <laughs> but he went home, and with this, with the parody in his mind, he just went home and pulled out. Uh, graph paper and colored pencils and he re re drew the parody and then he drew <laughs> the world record is 3.13 if you tr if you want to do it i have confidence that you can do it but it's there's is, isn't aren't we nearing the just the physical um ha how fast a cube can physically turn eventually we'll get to where we can't break the world record but i i'm <laughs> probably still breakable that's cute so with colored pencils and graph paper, he solved the parody. And then the next time he was with them, they were, he was t they were talking the they were talking about the parody, and they said, "Yeah, the parody is uh, uh, this many moves to do." And he says, "No, it's not. It's ten. <laughs> they said, "No, it's this many." And he said, "No, not it's ten. And he took it from the end in the four by four, and he ten minute ten moves. He had the parody. He's like, "Yep, <laughs> it's ten moves." <laughs> so his parody algorithm is ten moves long. Uh, so, all right. So now I have it scrambled. Uh, once, yeah, once, once the cube became solvable, I mean, and initially when it first came out, the, the line between cubers and non-cubers was whether you could put it down solved. Um, and then we went into the speed direction, but, but different people went different directions. Uh, some people went in the direction of let's let's use these as pixels and make pictures out of them. So um, so some people went into the artistic field direction of the cube, and then some like I said, some people went in the speed solving, moved to comp competing, and then other people went in the well fewest moves challenge. Um, the direction that I went was I could do it and I could teach it, and so <laughs> so I was surrounded by a cloud of wannabe cubers who kept at, at every recess, every lunch in high in middle school and high school. And the way it saved me <laughs> was I was I was a bit of a nerd. Uh, I was I, I didn't, was not diagnosed, but I, I believe I'm slightly autistic. Uh, but I was picked on a lot. And so by unspoken decree, the, the, the bullies just suddenly stopped picking on me and about three to four days later, when the, the main bully came up and said, will you teach me too? <laughs> so I survived the bullies by making them want to learn, by teaching them the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> so so I'm proud of myself that I eventually created this after a couple decades of a break. <clears throat> um, doo -doo -doo. So 3 by 3 by 9 Yes, formula A and B solves this. There is a minor adaptation you have to make. In order to make this work so the first thing in order just first time around, I, I don't usually I don't really I don't not like the reductionist method for the cubes uh, because it seems to me to be just a double solve rather than not just do all cubes the same way but for the I, so I'm gonna do this the same this I, I say that every corner every cube whatever it looks like has has the corners so we're gonna start with the corners so we're gonna start with the corners okay so we're gonna go through the ABQ method this the same order that I do any other cube. So start with the corners. Um, 
the difference being, I'm going to still start with yellow, but the difference being, oh, and this cube, this one has the center yellow is solid. I have another one that is, I think, in my backpack that has the center one is also divided, so that, like the nine. But, so the first thing to do before I start doing the corners is I have to make sure the center is lined up horizontally so that when I get to the center, it'll turn. Okay, so this is, so the centers are horizontal. And that and then from that point from this point forward, just doing formula A or just doing formula B. When did I make my method? It took me took me five years to come up with this method. Um because I, I would I did a lot of, of alpha testing. Um I would I get it down and I, I first I had to get it into a physical physical format that I could give to someone. <laughs> so when I got it all written down, then I'd find a way to, uh, find someone who had never done a cube before and said, okay, here's my method, here's a cube. Uh, pretend I'm not here and tell me where it gets confusing. Tell me where I need to be more specific or tell me what's confusing about it. And they'd tell me and I'd take it and I'd rewrite it and then I'd find someone else. I did that for five years until finally it's not pretty pretty clear I could do it. <laughs> and so then I tried to get, so then I tried to get an, an agent and everyone is like, well, who are you? The agents are like, well, who are you that you would be a good investment? Why should we do this? And so <clears throat> I took <clears throat> my three by three method. You said when I'm getting to that point. I took my three by three method because I, I had written, the way I hadn't written a book was here's how to do a three by three and then apply it to the four by four, same thing, five by five, same thing. It's all the same. But I found out that mentally the humans have this you accomplish something, then you give them something harder. It's like, no, no, that's okay. I just want to do this one. That one looks harder. So I, when I teach, I teach all five, all four of the cubes at the same time, the two, three, four, and five at the same time. And I teach, I just teach the corner method until everyone's happy with formula A and formula B. So it's like, oh, you did the corners. Good. Now do it on this one. Now do it on this one. So they get they, they, they early on as they're learning it's like oh all cubes are the same that one's not more hard than this one they're just all the same and all the corners are done the same way and then so I rewrote my entire book uh, into the five by five uh, geared towards the five as the basis rather than the three as the basis and then did another years of alpha testing and then once I got it <laughs> done um, then I posted it online uh, in 2020. 2020. So, wait, 24 years. Has it been that long? Oh, four years ago. 2020. So four years ago. Um, so yeah, I, I finished it during the during the pandemic, and then I published it online in the December of 2020. So. And uh, now, now, now I'm in the process of uh, now that I've got it. I mean, now I'm in the process of trying to find an agent again, and when I do, I can say, look, <laughs> I can say, oh, well, I'm Sunshine, da-da-da, you can find me here and here and here, and I'm on the Wikipedia, and I'm da-da-da-da-da. That is a wonderful question, and the thing is, is that I want my goal, it was asked, when will I publish the book? My goal is, I'd really want to be published by the For Dummies people, or the, the Idiot's Guide people. So I went to the four dummies people and they do not they do not take unsolicited manuscripts. You have to have an agent. So I need to find an agent and then have the agent present it to, to them so that I can if that's my goal. <laughs> that's what I want to do. So I need to find an agent and um, now I'm, I'm looking I'm in I'm in the process of looking again, uh, trying to find an agent. And this time I can say, Hey, I'm so and so on the internet and this is I, I created this method and it's got this many followers. And by the way, I've got another book in the works for the Beaks. So with that as my pitch, I'm hoping I can find an agent this time around. Thank you. <laughs> yes, so that that is going to happen because I want to be able to hold the book that I learned from and the book by the guy, the first cube master. So I want, I want it published in this format so I can hold all three in my hand and say, see? I wrote the book. <laughs> um, I know everything is digital nowadays, but I'm old and I want to hold it physically in my hand and say, look what I did. I did a thing. So yes, I'm in the process of doing that. Um, I'm going to also, also you guys, okay, you guys, I want to create a line of merch for the ABQ method. So, um, 
<laughs> great <laughs> great I'll sell it to you <laughs> so I want a physical copy I'm hoping I'm hoping that I can do the for dummies people there's another story there about the for dummies people um, but it doesn't have to be for dummies as long as but the thing is is that as I was getting it ready I had I thought I had a publisher lined up uh, page publishing the, the I have I followed a I called a phone number on a commercial on TV and I said I have this book about a manuscript about the Rubik's Cube and they're like the Rubik's Cube still popular didn't it like die out in the 80s and I said no 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 <laughs> the Rubik's Cube still has a following you still have a community da 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 and so he went he went home and asked his grandson hey is Rubik's Cube still anything and the grandson said yes he called me back and said okay <laughs> We'll help you. <laughs> Tell us when it's finished. And so I got. By the time it got finished, by the time we got it finished, I said, "Okay, I'm finished. I have my man, the man. It's in manuscript form. It needs. It needs to. I need. We need to public partner with the toy company, who does it, and we need to, to package it with the the learning cubes. And he says, "Okay, well, hey, just give me five thousand dollars and we'll start." And I'm like, "No, that's not the way it works." <laughs> he, the, the, the entire company is just geared to help you self-publish. I'm a cubist. I'm not a publisher. I want this done the correct way. I want to be able to get it into the bookstores, preferably at Christmas time. I want to be able to get it into the bookstores and be sold with packaged cubes. Because, oh, sound? My, air con my heater just turned on. My heater just turned on. So I'm like, no, <laughs> I will not be giving you, you, I do not need help self-publishing. I want this done the proper way. I need an agent to do this, da, da, da. So, but while I was looking, I'm sorry, I'm not keeping you guys. I'm just having too much fun talking. So while my agent, uh, while I was looking for an agent, um, lost my train of thought. Okay. I went to the web, to the Poor Dummies website and I searched, I'm like, I was, getting my manuscript was getting really close so I'm searching I'm gonna make sure that nobody else has done this before me that was the thing I was so wanted to make sure and every time I you know those spam thing spam cube things that you you'll see it's like you can solve the cube with just two moves and uh, then they have a cube that is in a specific scramble and they, 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 they you know they move two by two things and, da, 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 and look it's solved see it's not hard at all you can just do it and just do these two moves and I would Every time I saw one, I'm like, oh no, someone has figured, someone has published before me. <laughs> and I'd go look and it'd be spam. And I'm like, okay, I'm safe. So I went to the, I called, I went, searched down the, for the, for Dummies website for a Rubik's Cube. And it wasn't there. And I'm like, okay, I'm safe. And I finished my manuscript and I got it and, and did my thing with Paige and said, nope. And then I went back and looked for, checked again on Rubik's Cube, on the for Dummies. And they had a Rubik's Cube for Dummies. I'm like, because I searched for it, they went and found somebody to write the book. And I'm like, no, I missed out. Dang. So, however, a couple of years later when I looked again, that book was no longer a part of their curriculum because it was a really crappy book, you guys. Um, so, I, so I got a sample chapter on the Kindle. And it's it had arrows like I use. I'm like, well, that's part of what, what I'm doing. But it was just the, back, the the standard beginner's method, and you know, with and it wasn't. It, it had like round arrows for turning the front and all of this. It wasn't as simple as mine was, and it wasn't even self-contained. It wasn't even self-contained in the book. It said, go to YouTube and type in this search string, and watch that video, and then come back and we'll do the next step. <laughs> I'm like, they're so lame. <laughs> So I was encouraged and I kept working on my book. At the end. <clears throat> um, so, yes, the sound is my air conditioner. I'm sorry about that. Well, not air conditioner. It's a, it's a heater because we're still in we're still in winter. All right. So it's now. I'm now. I'm going to do from this point forward. Uh, I don't have to worry about my centers being diagonal because formula in formula B is not going to move them. So it's a commutator, it's a mathematical zero, it's not going to move them. So I'm going to start, I'm going to bring yellow to the top just like I do. Uh, uh, one of them is already on top, so that goes under my left thumb. Is there a yellow here on this corner somewhere? No, and I'm just, I'm ignoring the fact that it's a nine by, and I'm just looking at the three by side. So if there's a yellow here or here, there is. 
and formula A will bring it to the top. So out, down, in, up, out, down, in, up, out, down, in, up, it's on top. I don't care, I'm, I'm ignoring everything but the corners, I'm ignoring everything but yellow. All I care about is the yellow corners. So <clears throat> slide the top to preserve it, protect it. Is there a yellow here or here? No. So I rotate the bottom till the answer is yes. And then formula A, so as if there's a yellow one of these two places, formula A will bring it to the top. Okay? Slide that, slide the top row to protect it, keep it out of the way. Keep going with this one. If there's a yellow here or here, it will go to the top. Okay? Same way as I've done every other cube tutorial. So yellow is on top. Next thing to do is see if the sides match. And at this point in time, either one side will match, none of them will match, or all of them will match. So blue equals blue, but red does not equal green, orange does not equal red, and orange does not equal orange. So <clears throat> formula B is going to move three pieces around. With yellow still on top, I have put the matching face away from me, as if it's the headlights of a car that I'm in the middle of driving. And formula B is going to move three pieces around, it's going to move these three pieces. So these are going to come here, so it's going to look like these stayed in relation to each other. And since this one's going to go over here, it's going to look like these two switched. But you never switch two pieces, you're always moving three. So, top row, and then the outside columns to affect the, the corners, the edges, corners. Slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. And we look. it looks like, oh no, I messed up, you didn't trust the process. Formula A to bring the yellow back to the top. And because they're commutators, it doesn't matter that I'm moving. How's the merch coming along then? Uh, I am at the the what kind of merch does it would, would, would does everybody want phase is how it's coming along. I've done been doing some research on how to get merch published. Uh, um, I want to do I want to do a hat, but I don't want to do a, do a crappy baseball hat. I want to do a, a corduroy hat. I want to do hoodies, but I want really soft. It's got to be really soft. I want to do Herbie hoodies. Uh, I want to do the 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 as far as the logo goes. Uh, it'll be my five by five logo. It's up there. You can up there in the corner somewhere. My five by five logo, and then the AB cube dot how, and then and I also want the image of the two formulas together. I'm thinking of doing a poster on the wall that just shows demonstrates how the the how the rows and columns move in relation to the formula A shows which columns are moving, which slices are moving and, and how they're moving. So I want to do a, I want to do a poster. You just put it on the wall and just look at it and you can solve the cube just by looking at the poster. So I want, I want to do a poster, yeah, you know, um, mouse pad. Um, I, I also I thought it was, would be cute. Can you do the thin fleece type thing? That come. Noted. Thin fleece. I want, it, has, it has to be really soft. But yes, it should be not heavy. Maybe I'll do like a heavy one, a nice warm one, and I'll also do a fleece one. Not over heavy. See, that's what I want. This is the phase that I'm at. I want feedback as to what merch you would like to buy. What, what merch you would like to have. What merch would you like to have. And that's the phase that I'm at. But uh, the, the icons, I want to have the, 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 AB, the, the method, the, the two formulas together. That's one image I want on a hat or whatever and then the like I said my logo with AB cube I have I'm gonna have I'm gonna have stickers printed up that I can pass out at con cons and stuff con uh, competitions and stuff this is a for position only instead of the multi cube it's going to have it's gonna be AB cube dot how and it's going to have my icon my five by five flower cube flower icon on it instead but this is just a for position um, so and but I thought that it'd be cute to have a t-shirt with the formula A and B written upside down. So the person who's wearing it can just look down and see how the formula is as they're solving their, their cube. I thought that would be really clever. Have the logo on at chest height and the AB cube written on the back. That's cute. Okay, that's nice. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm just, I'm in the daydream phase. <laughs> it's like, okay, the world is the limit. I can have anything I want. What do I want? What's it going to be? Um, I'm, I want to make keychains so they can go onto the little keychain Rubik's Cube things. Uh, and I need to have, I need to have uh, like cheat sheets. 
and I don't know whether I want them to be credit card size or po uh, or uh, postcard size, or but I'm I'm probably going to have them in all three in full size, you know, three eight and a half by eleven sheets because I've I've just I've just signed up, not signed up, but I've just set up to start teaching the ABQ method at my senior center down the road. Um, and they're old people and have bad eyesight, so I need to be I need to put how I need to have a hand along that I can give to each person. So I'm going to, you know, eight and a half by eleven laminated. So I'm going, so it'll probably be the same as, so it's going to be a cheat sheet with just the formulas on it and a uh, visual depiction of the slices, the, the slices of the cube moving in relation to the formulas. So, and then my poster is going to be the entire method. Here's how you do corners, here's how you do edges, here's how you do centers. And then I want along the border of the poster is going to be a walkthrough tutorial of how to do my 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 uh, pattern, my pretty pattern. So you'll start with a cube, uh, upper right hand corner, and then it, you'll see okay, you do formula B on, and then it looks like this. To put formula B on these moves, and then it looks like this. Then formula B on these slices, it looks like this. And by the time you get over to the corner here, to the lower right hand corner, uh, it'll have the pattern. You know, just, just this is what the border is going to look like. So cube, do these things, do these things, do for these formula Bs, and then you end up with this pattern. And then back the other way from this pattern, do these things, and you end up with the, the cube. So that's going to just be the be a, a, the border. Uh, you should make a small sticker to stick on your cubes with a logo. Okay, good plan. Um, another thing that I also <laughs> I've also started doing, uh, I have a white keychain, white cube, white cube keychain, and um, I have started autographing that with my, with Sunshine and my, and the ABQ thing, and being able to hand those out as my, as my autograph. So, and also I have a little one by one cube that I initial to, to give out. But yes, I want to, so I want to have um, I need to have some merchandise, I need to have cubes that have the, the abq, abcube.how in the center so, so you can link. Oh, and I think, you know what else would be, I think would be a cool sticker to be a logo sticker, uh, to just have a QR sticker that takes me to my website. <laughs> so, um, any other ideas for merch that I should do? Anything, any, any ideas you have, just like drop them in chat or message me because I am just, the sky's the limit. Yes, there'll be a t-shirt. Um, yeah. Okay, so let me show you, do you want, you, should we finish this or let me show you my pretty pattern? Because <laughs> I'm having too much fun to teach right now. I'm going to show you my pretty pattern. My pretty pattern is called softball. Um, and if you if you look at a softball, uh, you've got it's it's made. You've got two pieces of cloth that are sewn together. So you've got this little like figure eight type piece, and then they, they fit together like so. And so um, this has that kind of imagery on it. So I'm going to start with uh, white and green or black and green. And this is done with seven formula B's. I think you should all have the same sort of design on A cube written on it. Okay, AB cube written on the back and the logo on the front at chest height. Okay, that is that is noted. Thank you. <laughs> all right, now I'm going to show you how to do my pretty pattern. Okay, start with a salt cube. <clears throat> my, I, I, I created this pattern back in the 80s. But this was before I had the AB cube method. So in, in the 80s, I would just do it. I wrote down everything I needed to do to do it. And then you do it again, and it gets back to solve. So it's one of those things where uh, it's you repeat, and it's the same thing, the same thing to get there as, as to get back. So I just wrote it all down and memorized this big old long algorithm in order to do my, my pretty pattern. Uh, once I came up with the ABQ method, I tried it again and figured out that it can be done with seven formula Bs. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do formula B for the corners, and then I'm going to slide the top, and I'm going to do formula B for corners again and slide the top. Okay? And then I'm going to turn it upside down and sideways. I'm going to do formula B for corners, slide the top, formula B for corners, slide the top. Okay? <coughs> and then so and then I'm going to bring the left side up. I'm going to do formula B for edges, and then lower the left side. And then turn it turn it up with my finger on the back piece here. So I'm going to turn it upside down and sideways. So that piece is the left side. I'm going to come up again. I'm going to do two more formula B for edges and back down, and that's my pattern. So now I'm going to do it. Now that I showed you what I'm going to do. Okay, so because formula B is going to move these three around. So slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. And then I don't do formula A to bring it back to the top. I just rotate the top again and do formula B again. So now different three pieces are moving. Up, up, down, down. Okay. And so what that did, that that uh, that gave that gives me this pattern. Okay. Then I go upside down and sideways and I do the same thing again. Slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, slide the top, up, up, down down and that gets me the same pattern up here so this is what it looks like on the top this is what it looks like on the back so uh, now I'm going to do the the edges I'm going to do the center layer here so I bring the left side up I do B for edges up up down down lower my left side and then upside down and sideways so that my back top is now my left bottom. I can bring the left up. I do two more formula B's. Up, up for edges. Down, down, up, up, down, down, and then lower the left side. <laughs> it did not do it. That's not what it was supposed to have done. Do that again. Evidently, in talking about it, I've, I messed up what I was doing. So let's try this again. Up, up, down, down, slide the top. Oh, I forgot to slide the top in, on, the, on my second four corners. Slide the top. Up, over, up. That's what I did wrong. I forgot to slide the top. Down, up, up, down, down, slide. Okay, now. Left up, I'm going to be for edges, left down, upside down sideways, left up, B for edges, down and down. And so we've got the blue, green, and white cloth uh, visual, blue, green, white visual that goes this way. And we've got the red, orange, and yellow visual that goes the other way, and they so they wrap around each other to meet. Uh, <clears throat> people will see this and say, "Oh, that's just stripes. I can do that." And then they'll start, and it it's not just stripes. So this is my pretty pattern that I created uh, back in the '80s. I have not seen it anywhere except for after I showed it uh, a week after I showed it on this this Twitch stream <laughs> that I saw it. Um, with an algorithm, <laughs> with an algorithm to get there, and then the reverse of the algorithm to get back. <laughs> Didn't even know that it was the same thing forward and back. So that's my pretty pattern. I want to have, I'll probably have a couple of things that have this this on it uh, as, sec as, a, as a second logo, just because I think it's pretty. And... Did I show you what my logo is for my 5x5? Five five? I don't have a 5x5 five five with me. Okay. All right. Well, that was fun. Yeah, I, there, there's going to be a commonality, of, 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 a thematic commonality. Yeah, isn't it pretty? Um, so, it says I know your 5x5 five five logo. All right. Well, thank you for the conversation, Juber. Jube the Cuber. I uh, appreciate you. And I really should solve this. I can't leave it. Sir. I can't leave it scrambled. Okay, so yellows are done, uh, and then I put the yellow face down. I got to finish this because I'm autistic. So bring the white to the top. Second thing is bringing the white to the top. 
And I don't have to worry about my centers moving because formula A does not mess anything up. Formula B does not mess anything up. Okay. Okay, so the corners are done. Check the sides. One side matches, faces it away. B, and then A to bring the color back to the top. Slide the top, keep going. Okay, and so now the first four corners are still happy to each other, the second four corners are not happy to each other, and the top batches of the bottom, so the corners are done. Next thing is the side edges, so, I, so I'm going to work on the yellow and white, and I don't care about the centers at all. So I find a piece that's yellow and white, and I place it one piece at a time, looking only letting the corners dictate what everything's going to be. Okay, so first column, second column, up, up, down, down. That's the thing about messing up the cubes is that I have to, <laughs> I then have to solve them or have a definite plan in mind for, for when, it, when it's going to be solved. Like I can leave the cubes scrambled um, if I'm in the middle of a, of a tutorial with, with Twitch, so I can pick up where I left off on the last step, but if, I, if it's not part <laughs> If it doesn't have a definite promise as when it's going to get solved, I have to solve it. <laughs> um, so talking about the, the mirror cube, and now that I know that the ghost cube is, 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 is just a shape, uh, mod, shape mod, I need to get a ghost cube on, on my list as well. Okay, so no more yellow or whites in the middle, so I just to see if it's correct. Uh, this one needs, is, wants to, is not correctly placed, so I'm going to displace it out to the middle where I can place it again, again just a formula B, but bring the corners to match the front and place it where it wants to be. Yes, so now I will be getting a ghost cube as well. On my, it's on my to-do, it's on my wish list. <laughs> we will get there. It's coming, I just don't know how when I'm going to order it. Okay. Up, up, down, down. Okay, so once I've gotten the opposite edges done, okay, the three by three, three sides done and the, the white and yellow sides are done, the three by three side is done. And so now the left, the middle is all just crazy, okay? And <clears throat> when I was trying to learn this, this three by three by nine, um, like, you know, I got the cube and I tried to learn it. And I hadn't, I hadn't figured out how, I didn't, I didn't try to apply formula B. I went to the, to the people who, I went to all the YouTube tutorials to try to teach me how to solve the cube. And they were like, okay, this algorithm is going to do this thing and this thing and this thing. So arrange your cube so that that looks right. That looks like it'll be advantageous. And then do the algorithm and then reset your cube and see what to do next. <laughs> and I spent a month, every day, someone new's tutorial trying to understand it. I'm like, I'm just too stupid to do this. I can't do it. I don't understand. I don't get it. And I'm like, cause, cause I couldn't, I couldn't think, I couldn't visualize what the algorithms were doing cause my cue was a mess. So, so finally lightning struck and I'm like, wait a minute. And I just picked up, picked up a big cube and said, what if I just pretend that I cannot move my yellow or white at all? <laughs> except for rotating the top row. Let's pretend I can't move my right. So so what what, what would I do? Cause I, and so I'm like, well, what would formula A and B look like if that were the case? And I'm like, well, I can't do this one. Would I buy a 21 by 21? Uh, yes, and it would probably only be solved once because <laughs> after that, I... <laughs> um, you know what I would do with the 21 by 21 though, uh, rather after I solved it, is I would I would use it as a pixel. Uh, I would use it, well, once I sell the book, <laughs> once I sell the book, I will be fine. I don't care how much it costs once I sell the book. Um, I would use it, I would create, I would use it to do a, a graphic. I would create, I would use it for a picture. 
probably the AB Cube logo. I probably make the AB Cube logo on it, uh, just so that it could, you know, be like an advertisement thing. So I would, I would not, it would not become my, <laughs> it would not become my main. The biggest cube I currently have is an 11 by 11, uh, but it, I, I don't use it because it's pillowed rather than flat. And when with large cubes, I frequently will just tap them on the table to make sure they're lined up. Show the 11 by 11. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, this is the 11 by 11. I did not buy it new, I bought it off of Mercari. And someone who before, before me, it is missing two stickers, the red and the orange. Uh, but someone before me had tried to re-sticker it. So you can see that the green sides, for example, are two different colors. Uh, the red looks the same, but yellow has two different yellows on it. So someone has tried to re-sticker this. So what this really wants is a good re-stickering. Um, but it is indeed an 11 by 11. Um, it's, but like I said, it's, I, I've solved it once. <laughs> now it's just pretty. This is my 10 by 10. And I solved this much more than that because it is squared. And so I can tap it to line the, the pieces up. That's the hardest thing about solving a big cube is getting them all lined up so they turn. And you guys, you guys have it made because back in the 80s, there was no finger tricks. <laughs> there was no, you couldn't just think what, you, <laughs> the cubes were very clunky and it took two hands to make each turn. So, um, consider that when you think about the first world record being 20, being less than 24 seconds. Um, so this one, this one is 10 by 10. But if I, if I had, a, what would it say, a 21? Oh. Yes, I would have the edges done and I'd have a really pretty pattern. I'd make pretty patterns on it. That would be... There's someone on YouTube, I just can't remember his name, uh, but he do, he has large cubes and he does epic patterns. Epic patterns. 21 is pillowed? That's okay. For 21, it can be pillowed. <laughs> You'd pretty much have to because of the internal workings. Um, it's my brain does not comprehend the inside of the large cubes at all <laughs> so but so one day one day after i sell my book i'll get that one that's worth getting it's worth having once i sell my book all right so You tell I'm autistic. I keep getting distracted. Oh, look, they're pretty. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so what I did is I took this and I said, what would what would it take? What can I do with what I know? And so I'm like, okay, can't can't move the yellow or white except for just the rotating the top row. And so for the formula formula B, you, there's a lot of this going on, and then you have to move the centers. And if the yellow you can't move the yellow, there's nothing much you can do. So I'm like, okay, what happens if? For every top row that I move on my formula B, instead of one, it's two. So what happens if I do formula B with the top row being twice instead of always back and forth? So I was able to see what would happen. What would happen is this. Uh, I go up, first up, second up, first down, second down. And that's formula B. And that worked. I'm like, okay, well, what did I do? Uh, it moved It moved three, it moved my centers. It affected my centers. Okay. And it affected some of my edges. It, it, these two flipped. These two created a parity. And these two, in exchange places, created a parity. Not really. You know, it's, it's not a parity unless it's the only one you have. So these two flipped. These two edges flipped. And these two edges flipped. And the centers happened. Okay. Well, let's do it again. Up. Up, down, down, and so an even number of turns. So an odd number of turns offsets my my edges, 
but even number of terms means they're the same. I absolutely will. I have your, I, I have joined, I have followed you on YouTube, so I will, yes, you'll have to let me know that it's there, and I will, I will absolutely watch it. Oh, yes, I will. So, even number still affects the centers, but has the, it does not affect the edges. One more, once more, sent for three. Okay, it'll be out in the week, he says. Up, up, down, down. And three times my centers are back to normal. So the centers do a three count. Okay, so so I can have the effect of moving the cor the edges without the centers. I can have the effect of moving the centers without the edges. And then, so three more, we'll get them back to start. So what I figured out, what I decided to do then, is that uh, I have to do the centers or the edges first. Okay, um, so I figured out that since these ones are going to flip back and forth again, I don't. I can just ignore them and just let them do their thing and don't worry about them. And but uh, so three things happen on the right, but only one thing happens on the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide the cube in half, and I'm just going to place the left into the left until the left is correct. And when I do that, then I can look at what the right is. And if I do that, when I do that, so, so I tried that, and <laughs> after a month of trying to tame this beast, I applied Formula B to it, and suddenly <laughs> I had mastered it overnight. How about that? <laughs> so it only took me 10 years of creating the method in order to master it overnight. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, I'm going to line up my, oh, I'm not finished yet. I'm going to line up my center. Okay. So I've got my outfit edges done. I need to do my sides now. Okay, I'll set my yellow. Up, up, down. Uh, yes, I am going to apply for affiliate ship. I have to have a certain number of followers. Uh, actually, I don't know how many followers you have to have in order to do an affiliate on a Twitch. But I know that for, um, uh, for Amazon, I have to have a certain number of followers. Uh, there's, everyone has different roles. I need. I have 94 followers. Hey guys, you want to get me to a double, di through triple digits? Um, so all I need to have is 550 followers. Do I have to have? Uh, what are the other? I'll look. I'll look and see what. Also, I think there's a, there's. I'm told there's a way to put a donate button on my Twitch, and I haven't figured out how to do that. So once I figure out how to do that, I'll do that. But in the meantime, so I'm doing. We're doing the side edges. I've displaced my yellow into here. Um, so I'm looking at the yellow on piece on top that's not yellow and I'm going to line it up where it wants to be so I'm, I'm looking only at the middle area middle row I don't care about the other ones average of three viewers per stream I have that I have that okay so corners match the front is going in the yellow direction and when I finish the side edges it's going to look the yellow is going to be yellows and whites will be correct again and it's going to the green side and it will have one thin little slice in the middle that is solved. Okay. So, one thin little slice in the middle that is solved. So, looking at the sides, we've got the outsides are solved and one thin little slice in the middle is solved. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start placing things to the left. Do, your corner, do edges first, centers last, because I can do... I can do several centers at a time, several edges at a time if I do that. So my first face here, first first slice here is the, the red and the green side. So I'm going to look on my right side <clears throat> to see how many yellow, red and greens I can get that want to move over. Okay, this one wants to move over. Um, that one's correct. Okay, so. <clears throat> I want this one wants to move over. These other ones want to move out, so I'm going to displace them with something. I'm going to displace them with pieces that belong on the right, so that the pieces that belong on the left can be moved over to the right to be placed. So this one, this one wants to be placed here. This one is correctly placed, and this one here is also correct. It's also correctly placed. So these three, I'm going to move these three over to these three <clears throat> and treat them as one piece. So. Uh, remember I said these two flip and these two flip, so I'm going to separate. I'm going to put the space where they're going to land down, 
and I'm going the pieces that are going to go there to the back. So they were lined up and I separate them. So they're here and here and I do formula B up, up, down, down and that place these ones switched. I don't care about that but these ones went here. So this one's in the correct place and these ones I'll work on later. So that one's done so I'm going to work on this color now. So I'm looking for reds and blues and I look there one two three okay these ones all want to go over here so I separate them so that they are top back and front bottom and I do formula B up up down down okay and th the things on the right are free moving I don't care about them I only care about the left and so this the left side is placed next over here this one's already in the right place so it's just these two that need to be moved so I'm looking for them over here one two there they are so these want to go here so I separate them so these will switch up up down, down, and those are done. Okay, so I'm just working, I'm placing the left edges. Uh, so here we're looking for orange and green. Uh, not one, two, three. Okay, uh, two of them, I found two that, that I can place. This one does not belong over here, but this one belongs over here. So I'm going to treat, pl place these three. Bye! Okay, separate, so I separate them. Up. Up. Down. Down. And we're getting there. Okay, just move along the road at a time. Okay, so this one's correct. I'm just looking for these two to place, and here they are. These two want to go over this way. Separate them. Slide, and I do both of them at the same time because I can. Up, up, down, down. Okay, so this one's correct. This one's correct. This one has one more to place, so I'm looking in this layer. There it is. Separate them. Up. Up. Down. Down. Okay, so that one's done. Uh, one more piece here. I need the red and green. There it is. Separate them. And up, up, down, down. Okay, so one, two, three, four, all four sides, all four of my left sides edges are complete. So now I look at what I've got on my right, and either the white will automatically always be correct as well, or there'll be a parity or two. So here's two reds. They go there. They belong there. That's good. Uh, on this on this slice, blue, blue and green are not are opposites, but the red slice works again. The red and orange is not the same. The blue side is correctly placed. So I move the correctly placed ones all to the same face. Okay. So these ones are all correctly placed on the left on the right. These ones are all parodies. Blue and green, blue and green, orange and red. So these are all parodies. So we've established that as I flip these two, these ones flip back and forth uh, every time there's an odd number. doctor's office they're going to come there I, I didn't answer 
but it's my doctor's office they're going to call back again so I should probably uh, let this be hi we got a first time chatter you guys hi nice to see you uh, <laughs> I hope you follow me uh, I need to leave because I've got to take a phone call from my doctor in a couple of minutes so thank you for joining me thank you for finding me uh, if you've just met me I'm Sunshine, I created the ABQ method for solving Rubik's Cubes, and I'm demonstrating how it works on every complexity uh, cube, n by n by n cube. Also works on minxes as well. So uh, thank you for finding me, uh, follow me, and you'll see when I, <laughs> I'll be happy to talk to you next time. Uh, in the meantime, I do have to go. So I'm here weekday mornings and Saturday mornings and Friday evenings, so come join me. <laughs> I will finish this then. In the meantime, go have a wonderful day, you guys. Go be nice to yourself, drink lots of water, and have fun. Bye, Soft Ivy.